Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to the Whiskey Cove. And on today's episode, we look at seven whiskies that are probably just about worth the splurge. Run the video. All right then folks, thank you for joining us for another episode of the Whiskey Cove, where we look at seven whiskies that are probably just worth the splurge, which means to spend some money on if you have that in your budget. And when we say spend some money on, this varies from something that's like $150 all the way up to like $1,000. So depending on where your budget is, if you want to spend a little extra money, or say a little extra money, a lot extra money of your hard-earned money on a bottle that is probably just about worth it, if it's like a one-time thing and for a very special occasion, then one of these seven balls might be for you. With that being said, before we get into today's video, if you haven't subscribed, please consider being a subscriber. As we approach the 5,000 subscriber mark, we will be given a free giveaway for you folks at home. You just need to be a subscriber and continue watching the videos and looking for updates on when we'll do the 5,000 live stream. So far, we have three bottles in that giveaway. That is going to be the Willet Four Year Rye, that's going to be the Weller 107 OWA, and that's also going to be the Old Forester Single barrel barrel strength so if you want to be within an opportunity or one opportunity to win one of these bottles then make sure you subscribe and continue watching the channel for when we get close to that 5,000 mark so with that being said let's delve into this video shall we and like I said these range from the hundreds of dollars up to about a thousand dollars where will you get these bottles of whiskey from well maybe every so often where you come across a store that's considered a museum you might see them there you might see them on the bourbon trail in kentucky or you might have other connections around the internet to be able to pick up some of these balls what i would say to begin with i would caution you a little bit here uh, even buying bottles of whiskey very rare bottles of whiskey from stores doesn't always guarantee uh that they're, they're, they might be fakes or they might be refills or relabeled i believe there was a store out in new york that was selling fake e.h taylor bottles uh, which is quite shocking if you think about that, you know, when you go into a store, you expect it to be the real deal, but sometimes it's not. And when there's money to be made, then there's gonna be criminals. So just be careful, do your due diligence, look up what labels are supposed to be like, look up what seals are supposed to be like, and also most importantly, look on the laser codes and just make sure that matches up to real bottles of whiskey. With that being said, let's take a look at these seven bottles. So bottle number one, we'll do the bottle, the only bottle that I don't have in, uh, that I don't have and that is going to be the Thomas Hardy we'll put that bottle on the screen here so I've never owned a bottle of this Thomas Hardy right however I have had to try I've had tried it or have tried it twice uh, first time was at a bar I think I paid like $35 for it a couple of years ago and then the last time was actually at a store in Denver, Argonos, who do the Father's Day Whiskey Wheel, and they were giving out free samples. What guys, I know, right? Free samples to Thomas Hardy. They were also doing Weller 12 uh, Old Ripper and Winkle as well. So some really phenomenal juice, free as well. So thank you for doing that, folks. Uh, why I chose this bottle, it generally is one of the cheaper, or if not the cheapest, uh, of the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, but it's also probably one of the tastiest. And I don't know if it's just because it's a rye and it's not aged as long as say like the Sazerac rye, but it, it, you see them, I've seen them a couple of times in stores set around the $800 mark. Yes, still very expensive and wildly, wildly more than the MSRP of like 150 bucks or 100 to 150 dollars. But that's not what the video is about. The video is about like if you have a bit of money that you want to spend on a special bottle and you want to splurge but you don't quite know what to get, then Thomas Hardy rye definitely fits that. It is classic rye tasting, rye spice. You don't get any spearmint, but you also get some really nice oak and vanilla backbone of typical Buffalo Trace products there as well. But it is a proper man's or proper person's rye, so to speak. It's not going to be a bourbon drinker's rye. So if you're someone who doesn't particularly like rye, then that might not be the bottle for you. So then for bottle number two, and let's move into the bottles that I do have. Uh, first up is gonna be uh, Weller Full Proof. So MSRP on these guys is about 50 to $70. Wouldn't it be nice if we could all pick them up for that price? I've been quite fortunate that I have a couple above my head that I've been able to pick up at around that price. However, if you're gonna buy them, uh, I guess on the secondary, whatever that means, right? Or see them in stores. They're gonna get marked up to about $300 or so. Is it worth $300? If you're splurging, it probably is. You know, it's not a Thomas Hardy where you're going to be paying $800 and it's not some of these other bottles where you're going to pay a little bit more. However, for $300, I think 
maybe like a one-time really special occasion, it might just be worth the splurge, depending on your palate and depending on what you like. If you like wheated bourbons, if you like higher proof wheated bourbons, I think this is 57%, uh, then this might be for you. You get kind of creme brulee, burnt brown sugar notes. You do get some kind of like wheat, a tiny little bit of wheat bran that comes through there as well, but such a rounded and excellent product. I could have chosen uh, any of the Weller lineup, but I chose this because this is my favorite. When I did the blind, this was my favorite. However, if you like something that's a little lower in proof, then consider the 107, which you could probably pick up between $100 and $150 in some places. And I believe that's coming in like 52.5%. But then if you're someone who likes an extra aged whiskey, then maybe the 12 years view, but that's coming in at a lower proof for about 45%. Again, you're not gonna break the bank, but it's still quite expensive and it's still six times or so more than the MSRP, but still maybe a bottle you would want to splurge on. So then for the next bottle on this list, uh, we've been doing uh, a little bit with this bottle lately on the channel because it's just such a good ball as well and that is going to be Russell's Reserve Single Rick House. So yes this did come out this year and it did come out with a hefty price tag and that was around the 250 to 300 dollar mark and that was the MSRP. There's no mark up there. A couple of these has uh, have come through to Colorado and even at times I've seen them at a store and I've gone back the next day or the day after and it's still there as well just because of the hefty price tag. However I think people are starting to catch on just how good this whiskey is. It's a phenomenal whiskey. We give it a really high score in the review that we did on this. Proof wise, our ABV is 56.2% ABV or 112.4 proof. This is the Russell's Reserve Single Rick House of Outer Camp Nelson C, matured on three and four. So a blend of barrels from floors three and four. I can't say enough good things about the bottle. Would I buy one again for $250? It's really difficult decision because I've had it and I have the bottle now and I have a lot of other good whiskey. I probably wouldn't, but that doesn't mean that bottle isn't worth that amount of money. You might even have to pay a little bit more now depending if you're going to find it at a museum or get it on the secondary market. But hopefully as they re-release some stuff, maybe they might do a rerun of this, but it kind of sounds like they might not. So if you're someone who likes to pick up special and collect the type bottles then you probably want to go out and get this you might end up having to splurge up to about five hundred dollars but it might just be worth it for you there so there's the russell's reserve single rick house and just for you folks at home i did not include the russell's 13 because this is just so much better that's not a bad whiskey this is just phenomenal so for the next bottle on this list um, we are going to high west and that is a high west 2022 burai so this came out, was it this year or last year? I can't remember. It was some, it was either at the beginning of this year or the back end of last year. What a phenomenal release. I, I, I typically do not like bull rice. They're just, for whatever reason, uh, I like my rice and I like my bourbons, but when they come together, it just doesn't really work for me. However, this is phenomenal, phenomenal juice. We also give it a really high score on our review. MSRP did kick up a little bit. I think it was about $80 initially, and then it went missing for a couple of years or it was only released in Utah or at the distillery. But then it came back with like $130 or $150 price tag. So quite expensive there. You might be able to still find these floating around from different places, but I haven't really seen that much of them lately. I'm hoping it comes back next year. So if you're wondering, or you're someone who slept on this this year when it came past you, uh, don't sleep in it next year. Obviously, we don't know how good uh, the juice is gonna be next year, but if it's anything like this edition, then it's definitely worth the $130 price tag. I would even go as far to say maybe pay $200 for it if you want to splurge, maybe even $250, and you're someone who likes boo rice. This is excellent. I don't get any of that new high west distillate like funk. It's just sweet goodness, sweet vanillas. Uh, yeah, that rye, uh, that rye and bourbon just works so well, so, so well, so well balanced, so well crafted, so well rounded. So that was the high west boo rye. And then next up on this list, we went down to Tennessee of all places and we went with a Blue Note 17. This is of course unopened, but I have tried one of these 17 year releases that was above 50% ABV. This one sits a little bit below a 47.75. You probably wanna try to, if you're gonna splurge on one of these Blue Note 17s, try to find one that's above 50% ABV. Heck, if you can get the 55% ABV, that's even better. Kind of has like a lot of that wood oak backbone and it kind of drinks so smooth with a nice little bit of sweetness. It's really nice charred vanilla notes and some kind of like, again, creme brulee brown sugar notes there as well. 
excellent, excellent whiskey. And the most surprising thing about this, yes, the price tag is around about $150, but the most surprising thing is this is actually distilled in Tennessee, uh, which Blue Note don't distill their own stuff, or they might have started to distill their own stuff. But they're really good at sourcing whiskey. They're uncut and unfiltered. The bottles you can pick up for store picks are like 60% ABV and above. You can pick up for like 50 bucks. It's phenomenal juice. And this has obviously probably come from Dickel. So I don't know how they got a hold of those Dickel barrels. And I don't know how they're so good because this has none of that Dickel funk, so to speak. It is just beautiful cherry, vanilla, oak sweetness. It's crazy that they, Dickel are able to put out such good whiskey and they don't even put it under their own umbrella. They just kind of give it away, not give it away, but they've, they've sold it off. This is, even though this is a Tennessee whiskey, it definitely has some, all of those classic bourbon notes. You would drink it, you would never know it's a Tennessee whiskey. Again, $150. You might more be looking closer to $250 for this bottle. Big age statement and a really great taste in whiskey. If you want to splurge on something that has a lot more age, then this might be the bottle for you. All right then folks, two bottles left and for the penultimate bottle, we're going back to High West over in Utah, Park City, and we are going to High West, a midwinter night's dram. Truth be told, the two releases at the back end of last year, the 10 and then the Encore one that they did, I wasn't impressed with both of those. For whatever reason, the 10 year or the newest release of the High West Midwinter Nights Dram, the regular edition, was probably my least favorite High West for quite a while. However, we picked out the nine ball here because the nine was probably my favorite for a long time. However, I know a lot of people have different palettes and some people prefer the 10, the nine, the eight. It depends on what you like. I get much more berry notes, kind of that fruit punch and kind of like that pork definitely comes through. This reminds me so much of Christmas. If I were to have stopped drinking for whatever reason, I definitely would still try to find a bottle of this and try to drink it around Christmas time because it definitely has some of those like Christmas spice notes that come through in this whiskey. Yes, like I said, this year's wasn't great, but I feel like it's probably gonna get back down to business this coming year and it just depends on your palate. Again, much like the other High West, this has kicked up a little bit in MSRP. I think this in Colorado is about $150. I think at the distillery it's about $130. So it depends on your state and what the tax is and what not that is or how much they kind of charge coming into the state through the distribution networks. However, I think you definitely should pick one of these up. And it also seems like distribution is getting a lot better on these. So we had a lot of this coming through to Colorado this year. So I'm expecting even more now next year, now that they sold out uh, to, I think it was Constellation Brands, the folks that own uh, Svedka Vodka and Modelo to name but a few. So we should be seeing more of this. I'm hoping the MSRP doesn't go up again, but definitely worth splurging. And I would just wait until November time when this comes out. I wouldn't go looking for it and paying above $150. I would just wait until the new one drops and hopefully you folks at home can find this bottle there. So of course we have one bottle left and I've, this is the most expensive bottle or the bottle that's gonna cost you the most money to go out and splurge on this list. And another bottle that we cracked this year and we're able to get, George D. Stag 2023. For the folks at home who watch the channel a lot, this shouldn't come as a surprise. What a great taste in whiskey. I'm not saying this is the best whiskey that I've ever tasted, but I can't remember another whiskey that is better. Uh, I've tried Pappy Van Winkle 15, which is phenomenal, phenomenal juice. But because I have tried that so long ago, I can't quite remember if it's better than this. But I do remember as a memory that was phenomenal too. However, with this again, a lot more proof. This guy is to 2022 release. So there's 69.35%. So George D. Stag went missing for a year and then they came back with this guy. And this is just phenomenal. I believe this is also aged for 15 years as well, which is a huge age statement when you're talking about a barrel proof whiskey and that aged oak doesn't consume the whiskey. I know when you get up there and proof and get up there and age, some folks will say uh, that a lot of the whiskey can become over oaked. No, not with this one. You get that huge maraschino cherry note. You get like a coffee chocolate note there as well and just huge amounts of barrel char, creme brulee, all the sweet goodness, maple syrup, toasted marshmallow, all is in this bottle of whiskey. The whiskey comes right down and we take our ratings very seriously here. We give it a 98 out of 100. And that ain't no whiskey advocate or uh, wine spectacular scale. That means something and that's a big deal. I can't say enough good things about this whiskey. I paid about $150 out the door. I was fortunate enough to win this in a lottery. 
However, you're not gonna be able to pay $130 unless you also win in a lottery and get very lucky. Uh, this is probably gonna run you up close to $1,000 if you're lucky enough to see it on the Bourbon Trail. I think when I went down to the Bourbon Trail in the middle of summer last year, I saw a George D. Stag and they were selling it for about 900 bucks. Uh, I wasn't going to get it because I don't like to pay that sort of money for whiskey. But if you want a splurge and you want a fantastic bottle of whiskey that you know is just gonna be a hit, this is gonna be it. Even at the high proof, it just drinks like a 55% ABV whiskey. They've done a phenomenal job. The consistency, the flavors, so well-rounded. I can't say enough good things about this George T. Stag. So that was the list. Hopefully there's something to be learned from this list. And if you enjoy what we do, hit that like button, comment down below if there's any bottles that you would recommend that you might splurge on, or maybe bottles in the past that you have splurged on. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be in for a chance to win some of those excellent bottles that we're doing the free giveaway on. So as you drink through the world's whiskeys one glass at a time, cheers.